So back at the top of January, in my first video of the year, I sent out a call out to you guys and I asked you to respond in the comments in that video to list all of the weaknesses that you're committing to working on this year. And a good number of you guys responded saying that your timing sucks. So I just, first of all, want to give a shout out to all of you guys and applaud you for being brave enough to admit that because quite frankly, more musicians should. So anyways, we've talked about timing here before on the channel. In this particular video, I'm going to give you some tips on how you can improve your time playing on stage. There are very few things more important for us drummers than having good internal time. And developing good time, good meter is what some other people call it. But, um, but developing that ability is, is a lifelong process. You're going to be doing it for as long as you play the drums. So it should remain one of the main objectives when you go to do anything on the kit while you're practicing, whether it's just a simple exercise, on the snare, or you're working on your grooves, your fills, your solos, whatever. Time should always be a main objective. So that's pretty much one of the most important reasons, um, or the main important reason, why you should always work with a metronome when you're um, working on your exercises on the drums. Now I have two videos that I'm gonna refer you guys to. One of them talks about how to use your metronome, and then the other one, um, a recent video of mine where I talk about how to master the click. Now I want you to check out both of those videos if you haven't already seen them, but the mastering the click one is really important because all of that that I show you in that video applies to what we're talking about today. But we're going to focus today on playing great time on stage. Um, whether it's with a click or without a click, especially without a click, and I'm just going to give you some tips, things that you can keep in mind that you can do, and, and actually one physical thing that you can do on the drums that'll help you play with better time on stage. All right, so you're on stage. It's go time. Here are three tips that are going to help you play with better time on stage. First thing you need to do is establish the tempo. So whether you're counting it off yourself or, you know, if everybody's on ears, whatever, even if that's the case, you still need to establish the tempo. If not for the rest of the band, do it for yourself. Once the tempo has been established, you got to anchor yourself to it. 
All right, once those stakes are in the ground, right, now you're in a position where you can start moving around it. Now, if you're not actually counting the song off yourself, if the singer's doing it or somebody else in the band or whatever, um, you gotta find it. Find the tempo on the stage. Look around and see who's doing what. If you see a foot tapping, if your singer is tapping his or her foot, all you need is like three or four taps and that tempo is established. Lock onto that and keep it. Or you can listen out for another instrument. Maybe it's a piano lick, maybe it's a guitar riff or something. Somebody is gonna be subdividing something. It could even be a vocal line, whatever. Whatever you got on stage that you can latch on to to help you establish some sort of a tempo, find it, lock onto it, and anchor it. Number two. Once that tempo has been established and you've anchored onto it, turn on your grid. The grid is that conveyor belt of subdivisions that's gonna keep moving as soon as the tune starts. When you turn on that grid, all of your subdivisions on the grid light up, all right? And these are all now available to you to play on the kit. What this does is this gives everything that you play from this point intent. Okay, you're no longer just grasping at straws and just playing whatever fill you want to play and hoping it comes out in time. Your fills are now being played with intent. It's no longer just a cool fill, it's a 16th note fill. Or maybe it's a triplet fill or whatever. But the point of it is, you're now aware of the values of the notes that you're playing on the kit. So now, that your quarter notes have been anchored, right? Stakes are in the ground. When you go to play a 16 note triplet or a 30 second note fill or whatever, your grid is turned on. So those notes are gonna fall somewhere on that grid and it's gonna help to keep it in time. And this of course brings us to number three, play on the grid, all right? Once that thing is turned on, the grid becomes your playground. It's your template. It's the thing that you play on top of that you start, you know, strategically placing all your notes in. This is ultimately what keeps you in good time because once your quarter note has been anchored and you know what all the subdivisions are, it's just a matter of you starting to bring them out. Great timing has nothing to do with how well you can follow a metronome. It's got everything to do with how you can lead from in here. And this is something that you really need to work on on a regular basis. So this is why, you know, that video that I was talking about before um, about just being able to master the click, that simple little exercise of playing through all of your subdivisions against the pulse, super important. It's one of the most important exercises that you'll ever do on a regular basis. Now one last cool little tip that I can give you to help you with your timing on the stage is to get into the habit of establishing a lead hand. Now when we go to work on our hands on a practice pad or whatever, you know, we're obviously trying to keep everything nice and even so that one hand is as strong as the other one. But while you're on stage and while you're up there and you're playing, you can actually establish a lead hand that can essentially serve as a timekeeper when you're going to play fills or whatever else. Now typically, you know, it's going to be whatever your strongest hand is. So you know, for right-handed drummers, obviously, it's going to be the right hand. For lefties, it's going to be the left hand. But it doesn't always have to stay that hand. You can sometimes leave with the right or leave with the left, depending on what you're playing. But when you're playing fills and you're sort of, you know, dividing the workload between the left hand and the right hand, you can actually assign one as kind of the timekeeper to just sort of help keep everything nice and level.
It's a really cool thing to get into, man. Like when I watch all my heroes play, you know, Dave Weckl, Vinny Coliuta, um, Steve Smith, Jojo Mayer. Like when I watch them, I sort of get the sense that they're sort of leading out with one hand with intent, you know, when they go to play different licks and fills and stuff. You can almost kind of tell that one of them is kind of wearing the pants. But yeah, you'd be, you'd be surprised, man, at how that little, that little mental shift can make such a big difference in how you play your fills. So there you go, man. That's it. So keep all of those tips in mind, all right? Keep working on your subdivisions. In the meantime, I guarantee you, you'll be a better timekeeper on stage. So do me a favor. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, make sure you mash that before you bounce. New viewers, new subscribers, welcome to the channel. This is what we do here, man. We make better drummers over here. Go ahead and hit that notification bell so you know when the next video is coming out. If you're digging this Heavy Grooves t-shirt, link will be in the description box where you can get one for yourself. I got a whole shop full of tees and hoodies that you might dig. Make sure you grab something on the way out. Drop a comment below. Thanks for watching this video. Like, subscribe. See you next video. That was freaking solid as a rock, baby!